G'day, uh, Graham Murphy here. Uh, today we're going to have a quick look at the Profound Vibra. Now this is our cloud option, so it's the Profound Vibra Cloud. Now this is a ground vibration logger uh, and it uh, delivers all the data straight to the cloud so you can monitor the data from the cloud. It will also provide you with SMS messages um, to warn you of overloads, etc. Okay, what's supplied in the kit? We've got the instrument itself. This is the transducer. This must be mounted in a horizontal position. So you need to either put it on the, uh, its little feet here or um, you bolt it against a wall, whatever, to a nice solid point. You can put bat um, uh, uh, bricks on top of it. That's, this is the spanner for that. Um, we've also got a um, these two um, uh, things, the, this is for pulling the bottle end off this if you need to. It's the uh, access to the SIM card, but there's a SIM card already installed, etc. We've got a charger. It charges up via USB. So this instrument has a rechargeable battery. Um, it'll tell you what the current state of the battery is at any stage when you look through the data. So if there's an issue, then you might have to pull it out of the field and recharge it. Okay. Um, when you rent this, you'll have two choices, either tech, tech Rentals can configure it for you or you'll configure it yourself. I'll just take through the situation where you configure it yourself. First thing you get is uh, you'll get an email from Tech Rentals with a, um, a URL to log into with a username and password. Uh, you'll then need to um, log in and configure the system. There is software in here, it's on a memory stick. So we have to install this software now on our uh, on a PC. You have to have admin rights to that PC. I'll just go through the process of installing the software now. Okay, I've installed the memory stick here um, and it's uh, the USB drive that's popped up. I simply go to this uh, Pro Vibra 4.01 software and I double click on the Setup Vibra 4.01. Now it will install a driver and um, this may not, but it should install. That's it, here we go. Right, now, this is where it's asking me for my admin password. So I um, log in as admin. And it's installing it. We'll also install the, uh, the drivers. Now we've got the, the software has been installed so I should now be able to find it under this icon here. There it is there. Now I'll need to plug the instrument in and uh, so when I run the software it will then find the instrument. Okay, the USB drive plugs into the instrument here. It'll only go one way and we'll need to um, plug then the uh, other end of that into my PC here. All right, the instrument automatically pops up. Okay, um, the, I'll now run the Vibra 4.01. You may have a later version, but it has to be at least that. It will ask for a license. Uh, there it is there, sorry. Here's our license here. When it asks for a license, what we've got to do is we've got to click on open and we've got to browse to the um, license file here and open that and that will then enable us to talk to the loggers and that's a really important process okay so I don't need to so I just simply click OK and that means I've found the instrument now I downloaded data in this instance uh, and that's irrelevant right we need to configure it so what will happen is the fact that if you uh, click on um, this here there's communication settings now, this, you, this must be checked. We will have this checked, pre-checked for you. The next thing you've got to do is set up a mobile phone number. I've got this set at the moment to my number, and I've given it the name GM, so I've just simply checked this box, entered that number. I go OK. Now, I now have to go to the Vibra. Now, that has set the instrument up for communications. I now need to set the um, change the settings on it. So there's two settings. There's the communication settings whereby you configure the phone numbers which it sends a message to, and this one here where you change your settings. Okay, we have to give it a name. So it'll be you'd give it a name based upon location. I'll just call this TR1. The interval at which you want it to um, uh, record information. So it's how 
close how finally you need to refine when events occurred. I've got this to 10 seconds, which is fairly high. You'll use DIN 80, um, peak category, and a uh, number of traces stored um, per hour, I think is what it is. This is the detail, so in other words, the highest detail, uh, if you need to see um, the actual waveform of the data gathered. So I go OK. It then updates the date and time. It will then sync that time with a particular logger. Um, and now we can come across and actually start to uh, configure the actual logger itself because we've done everything we need to do here on the PC. Okay, we now need to plug in the transducer. It plugs in here. Now you've got to be careful this goes all the way in. It's the red line at the top. And uh, if we want to see the data, I've, got, uh, I've still got the USB connected. I can disconnect that. Okay, as you can see, the menu's up here. Now we've got start menu, change settings. They're the same settings that we set on the PC. So um, if we've pre-configured the phone numbers for you, um, you may want to alter some of the settings. Well, it's very easy to change them here. Um, you make sure your date and time is right. Um, contrast, a few other things, erase the data. So you may have a false start on something, I'm not sure. Um, you can test your alarm out, etc., and send a uh, test SMS. So if, one, if I do that, if I hit OK on that, I'll, then my uh, phone will get the message. But we'll, get, we'll test it another way here at the moment. Anyway, I'm going to start a measurement. So I go OK. Now it detects the geophone. If the geophone isn't sitting with a bubble and it's approximately upright, it won't pass and won't start. Now you can see the countdown time up here. Right, there's our 10 seconds, so boom, they were the readings in the first 10 seconds. So we had a Z of uh, two millimeters per second there. So if I happen to knock this and cause an alarm, right, we've got an alarm that was 33 millimeters per second. Now what will happen is it will hold that display and here's my phone with all sorts of other silly things on it, um, etc. So you've had a lot, you know, one of your operators set something off in the field that's caused an alarm and you might be supervising it. Now you might have five or six instruments. Uh, the name that you use, this happened to be, I think this was TR1, right, switching on the, um, the, uh, uh, the, the modem. And you'll see it in a minute, switch on the modem and it will get, uh, find the network and then send the message. Modem initialize, wait for network, and it's, boom, sent the message. And there's the message from our uh, uh, warning us that we've had a, uh, an alarm level. Okay, I've logged into the URL we were given. And um, username, I've not been in there before, so it's, uh, I've got it to save my password. So, so I log in. Now, I've placed these icons. One can place the icons showing the physical location of the, the instruments, etc. And here they are, these based upon the serial number. So you need to record the serial number of the particular logger so you know which one is where. Now, if I click on this one here, for example, um, it's been set up to download the data periodically. I set this these up to download it. Every, uh, uh, every two hours. Now, to save battery, you probably have them download once a day. You'll still get the SMS message because it'll turn on a modem when it uh, gets an alarm, but um, downloading the data uses a fair amount of um, battery. So the idea is once a day, you turn the, the alarm on and uh, to turn the um, modem on and download it. But anyway, I can now come across and here, this is all the project information. And if I, um, which is, oh, sorry, take that takes us back to the project. Um, individual loggers, I can have a look at the graph. Um, I can now jump across to another one and that will load the data for the second one, 360, and uh, now 364. Wait a couple of seconds. Now here's the, the current battery levels, etc. externally powered, no, etc. Anyway, so now I can also click on this graph. Now this will be the information for the 364 and uh, it will have, because I've left this for a little while, and this is the, the data. Now I can auto scale that. You can see I've 
been very careful, so it's only 0.3 is the maximum. Um, but if I turn around and move along here, we'll find a higher reading earlier. And um, if I auto scale, it will therefore, <laughs> you can see the uh, 6.7, that was where I set that alarm off before, uh, I think on this one, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, so there's the data. It's relatively simple. One can zoom in and zoom out, auto scale, etc. Um, you can see exactly what's going on. We can turn around and pick a different instrument for the same time period. So we can compare that reading. That was 347. So this is the, these are the readings for 347 um, and 360 instrument, etc. And um, oh, that one, you see it's very low there and I can hit auto scale on that one too, etc. So in other words, even using the same scaling, 360, 347 when it downloads and transfers. Etc. the graph will change, 364. So we've got visibility, we've got everything we need, all the data's being downloaded, we can now monitor this stuff and keep an eye on what's going on. Now in this instance, you've got a very low value over here. So if I click on auto scale, it'll come back to something reasonable, 0.25. So this is stuff you don't need to worry about. But you can see how uh, there are movements, different locations across the site. You can see if somebody bumps one, it's pretty obvious because the others won't move and all this sort of stuff. It's, it's very easy to monitor from here. Um, you can get different types of graphs. You can also download data from the site um, as a CSV file, etc. So um, this is collecting all the data. It's all fully visible. It's sitting out in the field. This is a wonderful instrument and um, we have, uh, yeah, it's gonna be quite good. It's a, very, it's a very easy way to monitor ground vibration on site. Anyway, thank you very much.